Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Rob Willis.info here, and in this video I'm actually going to cover something that I haven't covered in quite some time, and uh, I tend to get a lot of questions about, and that's going to be my home lab setup. Alright, so just to give you a little bit of background of how I ended up where I ended up today, um, in the end of 2017 with this big old stack. Um, so at the end of 2012 or so, um, I wanted to get into web hosting. I'd always been into web development and stuff like that. Um, but I finally wanted to get into the, the, the servers themselves and uh, I wanted to start messing around with IIS more and MS SQL, MySQL and all that stuff. Um, so I bought one uh, PowerEdge 2950 and uh, started running uh, ESXi on that and playing around with VMs and all that fun stuff. And uh, that basically led into this. So what ended up happening was I, um, I got a job for a, a hosting company and uh, in the SMB segment. And a lot of the customers only had their production set up and that was it. There was no dev, there was no test. Um, so we'd often run into issues that were large and complex enough that we couldn't really troubleshoot them in real time because like I said, the services are live. This is the production environment. We can't reboot it. Uh, we can't take services down. Um, so basically, I would try and replicate those issues on my own home environment, assuming it was something generic like IIS, MS SQL, or something like that, a, a Windows issue. Um, but basically, I would uh, try and replicate the issues on my own home environment, and then if I could, then I could just work on it in my own time and, like, and freely reboot the servers and all that stuff and see if I could figure out the issue. And it all went downhill from there. Um, I ended up getting a lot better with Windows very quickly. Um, and then it also forced me into getting a lot better with virtualization since I was running everything virtualized. And um, it also made me get better with my networking portion too. I ended up eventually picking up a layer 3 switch. I've been running my own firewalls virtualized and all that stuff. So now, uh, whereas before I was doing a lot more Windows engineering, administration kind of stuff, um, nowadays I'm doing a lot more security uh, penetration testing, uh, threat hunting, and that kind of stuff. Uh, and this has become completely useful in a, an entirely different way. Um, so I'm still running a lot of the same kind of services, um, Active Directory, IIS, Terminal Services, um, but I'm also running a lot more Linux now too. Um, and then I'm penetration testing against those services. And then the other thing I'm able to do with in this kind of environment because I'm able to watch everything is then I'll run ELK and I'll monitor all those things and then I can do threat hunting and analysis against my own penetration tests. And, uh, and it really helps me grow in that way now. The other thing I want to mention too is that um, all of this stuff has been bought and used off eBay. This does not have to be something super expensive if you want to get into it. Um, for the most part, I spent less than $200 on each of these servers. And then I'd buy the RAM used. Um, I would find lots of um, hard drives for like 250 gigs. I'd find four of them or so for super cheap. Um, I did buy the SSDs new, and I did buy the uh, large drives, like the three terabytes and whatnot new. Um, but for the most part, everything you see here has been bought used. All right, so with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive into the technical aspect of this. All right, so here's my server rack, and uh, you may have noticed that it looks a bit unconventional, and uh, that's because I actually built this, and um, it was just another reason, an excuse for me to work with wood too, which I've always enjoyed. Um, but you'll notice the top here, I, I used some pine boarding, and then I went ahead and stained it with an ebony stain, and then finished it with some poly, and uh, to give it that nice sheen and that durability since I used it as like a tabletop. Um, and then after that, I built a frame out of uh, two by threes, and then I ran a two by three across for each one of the servers, but it'll hold three one U servers and three two U servers. And then I just used some of the same pine boarding that I used on the top on the sides just to kind of give it a closed in look and uh, seal in some of that heat. And so when I first built this, I ended up finding out that it made the room that it was in extremely hot. So I ended up building this box later on. That's why it's a little bit different in color. Um, but you'll see that it's actually attached with this hook and eye here, and that secures it on. And there's actually a wooden dowel that goes from there directly into the, uh, the server rack itself to kind of help line up things and uh, keep it securely attached onto the back there. So the whole point of the box is to exhaust the heat from the servers directly out the window. So at the top of the box I have a 6 inch duct and within there is a 6 inch powered fan. And this is the kind of fan that you would use in your bathroom to exhaust like the shower. Um, but I have one of those inside there and then I, and there's a 6 inch flexible pipe that runs through the window and the whole thing's been wrapped in a blanket to kind of insulate it and keep the heat in as well as kind of mask the whole thing. Um, but then at the window I have a board with another 6 inch duct with another 6 inch fan mounted within there and that one I have on an on and off switch so I can turn it on and off um, but it basically just heat, um, directly exhausts all the heat from the servers directly out the window so it doesn't heat up the room. And that's all there is to my server rack. It's nothing fancy. Um, it's very simple, straightforward, and cheap, which is what it was meant to be. And it's, uh, it's actually worked out very well for me. 
All right, so on to the servers. Um, so on the top here, you're going to see four Dell CS24 SCs, and then on the bottom, I have two Dell C2100s, and uh, everything's running VMware ESXi 6.5. So the Dell CS24 SCs are all pretty much configured the same hardware wise. Um, they all have dual quad cores, so 8 cores total, 24 gig of RAM, and kind of miscellaneous local storage. So this first one here, this hypervisor, it holds two virtual machines for the most part. Um, my uh, primary firewall, which is the gateway into and out of this entire stack, and then also has a full time uh, PCAP machine or packet capture. Um, and then the next three machines are my main lab, and these are actually currently configured in a, a ESXi cluster. And for the most part, the virtual machines there run off of a SAN storage, which is hosted on another hypervisor. And that's basically where I do all my testing from. And this next chassis down here, this is the one where I'm actually hosting all that SAN storage from. Notice the 12 bays in the front. Um, so I'm actually sharing out um, four SSDs um, to those three, three hypervisors above there for the, uh, the SAN storage. And I'm doing that through a, a Windows Virtual Machine and a Windows Storage Spaces. Uh, it's very similar to my uh, setting up a cluster storage video. Um, but yeah, so that's for the most part what I use that chassis for and then this next one down here I kind of use as my utility. I do a bunch of random stuff on there uh, I run a Plex server and I just do a bunch of random things um, But both of these have 48 gig of RAM. The one on top is uh, two dual, uh, Two quad cores and the one on bottom is two six cores and then powering all this I have two CyberPower 1000 VA um, UPS back battery backups. Um, those are probably going to need upgraded if I add anything else to this. <laughs> Alright, so now I've got the server rack pulled out from the back and let's take a quick look around the back and see what I got going on back there and see how this is all configured. So you see the box just easily pulls out and it just separates from the server no problem and it's really just a hollow box there's nothing in it it's just sitting there holding all the heat in and uh, this is the back of my server rack so on the top here I have a Dell PowerConnect 6248 which is a gigabit layer 3 switch and it's been fantastic um, and I tried to cable manage and color coordinate as much as possible to uh, kind of keep things clean but obviously you just end up with a lot of cables with something like this um, but gray is hypervisor traffic, red is storage, SAN, the uh, iSCSI traffic, blue is kind of miscellaneous, and I've just got some random cables running to the uh, Wi-Fi router for now. Um, the black is the Drax, and the yellow is firewall traffic. Um, but you see everything is kind of separated out, and like I said, the storage traffic is completely separate. It's all vlan off, and that's all iSCSI. And uh, you see the USB drives in the back here, and that's what I'm booting ESXi off of. Which, if you've ever seen any of my other ESXi videos, is how I always do it. And uh, like I said, black is the DRAC or the baseboard management controller. That's how I get to all these without a monitor. I hit them over the, uh, the Java console. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much the it. Um, like I said, I try to keep it as clean as possible and also helps keep that heat flowing through it. Um, but as you can see, anything like this is going to be a lot to manage and kind of keep clean. And uh, so I think that's where I'm going to wrap this one. At this point, you guys kind of got the grand tour of my home lab and got a little bit more of an idea of who I am and what I do. And, uh, and I think that's going to be it. And uh, actually, you know what? There is one more thing I want to mention. Um, so this hypervisor here, actually, I wanted to mention that I'm actually going to replace with two of these brand new to me. R610s. This is what I've been messing around with behind the scenes. Uh, I'm still waiting for a few more parts to come in, but uh, I'm actually going to be switching from PFSense to uh, OpenSense and an HA setup. And I'm super excited about that. I'll probably make some videos around that stuff as I uh, get working on that and whatnot, but I, uh, I definitely have some stuff to keep me busy for the next few months. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and uh, thank you for watching.